Good morning, everyone. This is my first time doing the Facebook Live, and I'm so excited. I have some things that I want to talk to you about that have to do with my work as a quilter and quilt designer, quilt pattern designer also, which is what I've been doing um, a lot lately. Uh, not a lot of uh, going to my studio and just starting to quilt and putting something together in the middle of the night. Usually when I go uh, downstairs, which is where my studio is, I have a project in mind. I have a pattern to cast. Um, and so that's what's going on with me lately. But I have some things that I want to show you today. Um, in my list here, first thing I want to talk to you about my favorite methods of making half square triangles. When I first started um, making half square triangles, usually the patterns said, um, you know, you add seven eighths of an inch to the size that you want the half square triangle to be. And um, I confess that I complained a lot about it to myself. And I heard a lot of people saying that they didn't like to have to add that. What is that seven eighths of an inch? Well, I really like that. Particularly as a pattern designer, I can get uh, half square triangles in any size that I need. So lately, this has become a favorite method. Uh, if I need a particular size of a half square triangle, I know exactly how to get it. I just have to add seven eighths of an inch. And so, um, that has become very flexible. I love it. I love that method. My second favorite method of making half square triangles is using this doohickey here. I have a lot of rulers and I'm sure you guys have lots of rulers too. This one is my favorite, the strip tube ruler. This is a triangle ruler. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this well in the video. It's fairly large. And when you get it, it comes with this, um, this guide, two-page guide. I don't know if you can see that. The first page tells you what size um, it has a table. It says what size tubes, strips of fabrics that you sew and turn into a tube you need in order to cut a certain size of a half square triangle. In the back, it's, it has um, an explanation exactly of how you do it. Can you see? You have the, the strips of fabric, you sew them in tubes, and you position the ruler. And here's what I've done. I have a tube that I on one side is the print, on the other is the white. So what you do is you stitch a quarter of an inch seam on the top and a quarter of an inch seam on the bottom. Then you put it on your cutting mat, Place it on the strip on your cutting mat, and let's see how I can do this to show you how easy it is. And in this case, let me see. This strip is uh, looks like two inches. Uh, I'm going to show you in a minute exactly. And let me look at the table. A two-inch inch, uh, tube is going to uh, give me finished two-inch half-square triangles. Now, finished. I, for a long time, I was confused with finished and unfinished because, you know, when you make a half square triangle, you not usually just use the half square triangle. You're going to sew it to another part of the block. The finished means, in my mind, you're ready to wear it. If I remember that, I remember what this measurement means. Meaning, you know, when a clo clothes are ready to wear, you just take them out of your drawer or from the closet and you put them on. Same thing with a finished block is it is already stitched to other blocks in the quilt. Um, and so that's the finished size. So if I cut, for instance, two strips at two inches wide and I stitch them on this, on the top and on the bottom, all the way across the length, and then it says here on the table, cut size and ruler measurement. It's two and a half. So what I do is I find a two and a half inch line, which is right here, and I position it on the tube. Let me see on this side and see if it's gonna it's gonna work for you guys. So I position 
it's, it's on the very top of the ruler. I position the line, a two and a half inch line, on the bottom seam of my tube, and then I cut with my rotary cutter on both sides of the triangle. And then I flip the ruler, and I continue doing this. Cut here, cut there. So once I align the two and a half inch line, uh, of the ruler with the bottom seam of the tube and then when I flip the ruler I align with the top and then when you cut let me make a cut here and I'll show you what happens uh, so I'm gonna cut I'm going to get my tube and I'm going to uh, align here the two and a half inch line and I'm gonna cut it right here and I'm going to cut with my rotary cutter. Oops. Time to change the blade, I guess. I'll try this again. Uh, okay, right. So, sometimes we have some stitches right in here on the top because it came from the top uh, stitching line. You just open that. And then let me just press this open. And this, as it is, is a half square, um, however you want to see this in the camera, half square triangle. As it is, unfinished, it measures two and a half inches. Once it's stitched up to other blocks, it's going to be a two inch uh, half square triangle. Super easy. I like this method for uh, sometimes if you need a specific number of half square triangles of many different fabrics, uh, you you can sometimes waste a little bit of fabric by using this method. It's by far the simplest. Really, it is the easiest method because you just stitch the tubes, cut them, and then you pass open and you trim the ears. Very easy. It's the, the easiest of them all. Less steps to get to where you need. But um, it is ideal when you want to make a scrappy quilt. You know the size of the triangles, half square triangles that you need. So you take a look at the ruler. You, you see the, the line that you need to put there. You take a look at your table say, I know I need my strips to be this particular width. And uh, so you get all your scraps. You either cut the, the strips or you already have strips cut, two and a half inch scripts, uh, strips. It could be leftover jelly roll strips or it could be leftover binding strips. It is fantastic. So this it would be my favorite for scrappy quilts. Then another method that I like a lot, oh, uh, I'll tell you this in a minute, is one that I used recently. It uses the cake mix size 4. Cake mix recipe 4 by Miss Rose's Quilt Company for Moda. And I think I have only one page. Oh, I have a few left over. So what you do when you want half square triangles and the fabrics that you want to use are layer cakes, 10 inches squares, this is perfect for it. You pull the page out. That's This is what the page looks like. It has lines that show where you need to stitch and where you need to cut. You place that page over your square. And... Uh, you uh, pin away from the lines because you're going to make sure that you have room for your machine to uh, stitch everything. The page itself has all the information that you need. Every page has, so it's not like you're going to lose the instructions and you won't know what to do. And so uh, let me just pin it this way. I like to pin it a couple of times on each quarter. So this is what my preparation is. Just stitch it. I have my half square triangle. You stitch it on top on the right side. So, um, of course, what you're going to do is, I only brought one, but let's pretend that I have, that this is a half square triangle. So you put them right sides together and then you, you stitch this on top. So once you did that, 
you have the stitching line, which is the dashed lines. You will not be able to see here because it's very light. And then you have the cutting line, which is the straight line. So you're just going to stitch. You're going to follow the arrows, and then you're going to cut, as it says here. And you're going to get, you have two cutting lines. You have the three uh, and three quarters cutting line, and then you have the four by four cutting line. And uh, each sheet makes eight three and three quarters head square triangles or eight four by four. So this, if you want to use a layer cake, this is the simplest way to do, uh, to make head square triangles. So then we have, oh, I want to show you what I do. When I am working on a project and I have to trim the corners, usually it's like a... Uh, flip and stitch sort of project block that I'm making that you stitch a square to one corner of a bigger square and then you trim that corner uh, leaving a quarter of an inch seam, seam and then you press open. You're left with two triangles that are already together ready to be sewn and become a half square triangle. So usually what I do, I stitch it right away unless I'm in a hurry. And I have a string here of half, half square triangles that as I, as I was cutting them, as I cut them from the corners of a particular block, I actually kept them together and then stitched them together. Th these are ready for me to just separate them, open and uh, press them and use in another project. This is a fun way to have the, the half square triangles already ready and for you to improvise when you need to work uh, on some project that you just want to go to a quilt room and, and you want to come up with something fun. Or when you need, in this case, for instance, believe it or not, these are one and three quarters, so they're going to be one and a quarter um, half square triangles. And then you go, yeah, well, where would you use that? Hey, when you want to do me make mini projects, mini quilts, scrappy. I have a project I want to show you. Hopefully you can see. That's exactly what I did for this project here. See? This is a mini quilt. Tiny uh, half square triangles that I use as a sawtooth over here. Everything is tiny. And this quilt measures, uh, let me see. I want to say uh, 18 by 21 by 21. And that's where I used the half square triangles. See? So I had them ready. You have them ready, and whenever it's amazing how how flexible and how versatile these half square triangles are. And it saves a lot of time when you want to make them, and they are already here. Okay. Oh, so how about we talk about storage? Because you go, okay, so do you keep these strips hanging on a wall or where do you put them? Let me tell you where I put the leftovers of projects, or how I keep my scraps. Okay, uh, first of all, projects, I've been keeping on these, uh, in these uh, boxes, I think they're fantastic. I can keep all the plastic, I mean all the, the patterns or all the fabric related to a particular project and when I each work on the project, I just pick it up. There are some that have a little handle in here, I don't care much for that because I don't want to do this when I have a lot of blocks inside or little pieces of fabric. So I keep them like this under my cutting table. Um, I love this method. These are called creative options. These boxes are about, about by creative options. I love them. So ah, so I was talking to you about, okay, storage. See this, this drawer? Okay. What do I have here? On one side, I have my strips of different sizes. And you go, oh my gosh, I have a bin full. I have a bag full. Well, I could have that. But I prefer to have them here in a drawer. Because when I need a strip or something, if I'm making a, um, uh, a test block, or if I'm binding, or making a mini project or a, a mug rug or something, I can come here and look at my strips. And usually I have them separated by color. 
Uh, I get one of my sons to do it, or I'll do it in front of the TV. To separate them, I have reds, and have oranges, and browns. And this is grays, and it's easier. And it doesn't, I don't separate by width, are you crazy? But what I do do is put them like this, so they're all like this. They're not shoved, uh, scrunched up. And so it's easy. When I need a strip of something, I just have to come to this drawer. And every time I have strips of fabric, unless I want to keep them with the other fabrics, from a collection, I have them here. Then on this side of this drawer, I have a ton of bindings already ready. Uh, no, I haven't yet done like other quilters do, quilters do to stitch all their bindings together so, have, so you have a scrappy binding. I haven't, uh, when I want a scrappy binding, I do that by on purpose and I use the fabrics from the quilt, the strips from the quilt. So it's scrappy, but it still goes with the quilt. Um, I have bindings of every kind. I have flannel bindings, I have tiny bindings. Uh, if the binding is bigger than, uh, let me say, half yard, I keep it because I know I'm going to use it. I can use it in a mud rug. It's great when you have a project or a tiny quilt and you're looking for binding and you find the exact color binding that you need. And it's already pressed and ready to be used. I love it. So this is where I keep my binds. Okay, these mesh drawers belong, uh, I got them at the container store, and I actually have three, um, uh, how would I, I have, I have the bigger drawers for my fabrics, and these are for the scraps. And I have six of the sets of the bigger drawers, and then these that go in there. And they're stacked. So I have a, an area of my quilt uh, room where I have all the fabrics there. And they need to be organized, by the way. And now, again, how do I separate those fabrics? Yardage that I have, or fat quarters, uh, by colors. I actually have three main drawers with greens and beiges and creams and tans and reds and purples and oranges. Um, those I go, I, I, they're my go-to drawers. And then I have other drawers that have, their fabrics are separated by, by colors, but many times by collection. And so if I have a fabric collection that I get many fabrics from it, I like to keep them all together. I do not necessarily use them all together, fabrics from one collection. For example, this quilt behind me, um, it looks scrappy, but it's all the, the, the houses and the trees, they are from the same collection. I think it was Farmer's Market. Um, the other quilts that are on the other side, it's totally scrappy. It has a gray background, but I made it with... Um, fabrics by Riley Blake from different collections. So the fabrics from this quilt in the back, I have them, I have kept them together just because it's easy for me to remember the colors that are in there, but I don't necessarily use them for one project. I have pulled fabrics from there when I needed the exact shade, exact hue. Ah, okay, another storage. And I use these drawers the same way. Uh, they are fantastic. The fabrics can breathe. So I really like the mesh drawers. Uh, just because of that, the fabrics can breathe. Let me get my strip ruler out of here. Okay, this. So in this drawer here, I keep, I keep um, leftovers of projects that I may use in other projects. I, I keep them usually in sandwich bags and this is a fantastic way to put to, to save them if you have a lot of little pieces and they are all inside the sandwich bag or freezer bags depending on the size i think these are actually uh smart zip ziplock uh freezer bags i think they're quarter gallon and so i keep the scraps from different projects in the same place because they are half square triangles or, or sometimes blocks that I have left over. For instance, these pinwheels, I made a quilt with them and I had uh, like four or three left over. I, I like to keep them like this. Uh, I like that the transparent bags 
are easy to see through and you can tell immediately what it is that you have in there. These are <laughs> triangles, you know, the tips of squares that I was just talking to you about. They're ready to be stitched to become a strip like this. I haven't had the time yet, but when I want to use these as half square triangles, they are right here and they're together, the triangles are together. And then I have pieces of, um, uh, these are, these are uh, fabrics, they were actually butterflies that I, I have fusible web in the back. So I didn't like the size when I was making the quilt. So I didn't use these butterflies. This quilt was actually published in a book. Um, and uh, I think the butterfly goes together like this. But I didn't throw it away. The size didn't work for the block. I didn't throw it away. I will use these in different blocks. And the time will come. I will make pillows or I'll make other blocks or I'll make uh, table runners. It's right here. So this is how I keep the leftovers of projects. Um, I do not keep very tiny pieces of fabric. I just keep them when I can sew them like this and get them ready for a project. Uh, again, I really like putting them in plastic bags. They're organized. And then I, I, I put them inside the drawer. And when I'm looking for something, if I'm working on applique, if I'm looking for particular, some fabrics for stems or leaves or something, I usually find them in this drawer. And it's a fantastic way to put it away. And, um, oh, we're talking scrappy. So let me talk to you about what I've been reading. My most recent favorite book. And uh, you may have heard about it. It's called Old Scrap by Lisa Alexander. It was published by Martingale. Uh, guys, uh, Lisa, she's, having, she's been quilting for 30 years, so you know there's a lot of wisdom in here. A lot of great, great quilt designs. All scrappy, all that you can use, everything that you have in your in your stash, and the designs are fantastic. Um, I, I love this book a lot. Uh, it's kind of getting, it's an opportunity to get, oops, to get closer to um, Lisa when you really can't because she's down in Texas, very busy. I went to Houston uh, to the quilt market, and I was able to grab her and talk with her for a couple of minutes, but she's very busy. But this is a fantastic book. There is a, another quilt that I like. Um, well, I, I told you I like most of the quilt, all the quilts that are in this book. But um, there is one that you've, you must have seen it on Instagram or Facebook already. Is this quilt over here. It's gorgeous. I love this um, Irish chain. And, uh, but one thing that I really love about this book is her tips. And this is fantastic when you have the opportunity to read um, books there where the author writes their favorite tips about quilting or sewing or favorite techniques. Uh, this book has plenty, has plenty of them, and I really appreciate that. And yesterday I was sewing a test block. I don't remember which block it was. And um, whenever the points don't match, I will rip the seam and I'll work with it until they do. I do that with test blocks because I need to make sure that uh, if it, the measurements did not come out as I needed them, it's not because I didn't sew correctly. And if it doesn't look correct, it doesn't look right, it's not because of sloppy sewing again. And when I'm making quilts, uh, which I have been making a lot for magazines and books, I they have to match, period. And I will rip the seam ten times if I have to until they match. And sometimes uh, you may have found it um, in your blocks. It's not the seam that you just sewed that is a problem. It is the seam that you sewed before. Uh, a patch that is already in, in this block is next to another patch. So there's something wrong with that patch, so you have to go there and undo that. But she gives a tip here of something that you can do before you start ripping. And I've read it and said, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, but, you know, if it didn't match, it's because you just didn't sew it right. But whatever. So I've read, I've read the whole book. That's what I do. I read the book cover to cover. 
and uh, you find the reviews in my blog. Um, again, if you're just joining me right now, I forgot to tell you. I'm Denise Russell from Peace Brain. If I didn't introduce me before, forgive me. This is my first Facebook Live. No, I don't assume that everybody knows me already. It's just that I'm a newbie at this. Anyway, I'm Denise, Denise Russell. Okay, I'm Brazilian, so it's hard for me to pronounce my name. The other day somebody said, oh, you write Denise with Z? I'm like, no, Denise with S, so I guess I should be pronouncing Denise. Uh, and I've been here for 31 years, and if I call myself Denise, uh, I'm going to be referring to somebody else, not me. So, Denise in Portuguese. So, in my blog, you'll find a lot of good book reviews. And um, going back to this tip that she gives here in this book, I decided to do exactly what she said before ripping uh, the scene. Lo and behold, it worked perfectly. I did not have to rip the scene. Fantastic. So this book is great because of all her wisdom that is right here. It's great because of all, all her wonderful designs. Wonderful, new, with blocks that we've seen before, but they are put together in fantastic new ways. And of course, Martin Gale does a terrific job with the photography. So the, uh, Brent King is terrific. And uh, so this is eye candy from page one to the bottom, the back of the book. I highly recommend this book. It's fantastic. All right. So, uh, oh, okay. My list of other things to do to tell you is this. My, uh, what are some, or today I'm going to talk about one uh, favorite thing uh, that I cannot live without. This is my office. It lives here in my office, and it goes downstairs to my cool room with me when I'm ready to begin a quilt or um, a test a block for a pattern. The quilter's fabric calc, the fabric calculator. And it comes with this book, um, this reference book that is fantastic. All-in-one quilter's reference tool. Uh, you can't live without it. Even if you say, well, okay, but I just, I like to, make quilts based on patterns that have already been written. Well, one day you're going to want to make your own little quilt or your own big bad quilt. Or you see a block that you like, but you don't like it in the setting that it is in a pattern and you want to improvise. This is fantastic. Uh, the calculator I basically use, it has here you know, on the cover a little summary of the, uh, the, the main ways that you're going to use this calculator, the main buttons to press. I like it's an easy way to calculate um, when you have uh, a quilt that you want. Let's say you want to make a quilt for your king size bed and you want it to be, say, 84 by 106 or something. So you need to find out, okay, how, how, how much fabric do I need for the backing? How much fabric do I need for the binding? That's usually the way that I use this the most, but this is a fantastic way. You can use it for all sorts of different uh, calculations related to quilting. In this book, oh my goodness. Uh, okay, it's already on my desk, always on this page, which is page 23, which has the yardage, two inches, and decimals table. I use that table all the time. I actually uh, am almost memorizing it right now. Then I have a little post-it note on another page. Let's see what it is. Ah, cutting half and quarter square triangles. So you go, okay, what do you use this for? Oh, my gosh. This table is fantastic. If you want to set a block on point or if you want to set a whole quilt on point, and then you don't know how big you should cut the, tri the, the squares, from which you're going to cut the side square, side triangles, and the corner triangles. This table is fantastic. It's right here. It solves that problem. It, it, and I haven't, I haven't had any problems in my patterns with using this by following the guidelines here. And then this uh, reference guide has other ways how to sew white seams. Uh, I talk about thread, thread tension, how you fix it. Curved seam construction. So if you don't have it, this has been around for a long time. If you do not have the set, 
I don't know. I think when I bought it, I paid like 39 bucks, 40 dollars for this. My best investment ever. Enough said. Okay, let me put it back on the page that I need. And ah, I mentioned in my blog again. This is Denise Russell, and my blog is Pieced Brain. You know, a brain that is made of little pieces of fabric. It's pieced Brain. That's the name of the fabric. The the, the blog. Oh, there you're going to find my patterns. There are tons of free patterns or links to free patterns because I've been designing a lot of quilts for um, text, uh, Timeless Treasures, Hoffman, um, lately for Henry Glass and Blank Quilting, Studio E. Soon you're going to find those uh, online, and uh, you can download those for free. So I usually, when they are on there, uh, the, the patterns are on their web, websites. I write a blog post about it to give you a heads up and say, hey, if you like this pattern, go over there and download it for free. And so what I've been doing is when I test my uh, patterns, a few months ago I decided instead of having all these odd color blocks that I used as test blocks, I'm going to get some fabrics and keep using the same fabrics or the same color color weight for my test blocks. In the end, I'll have a sampler, block, uh, sampler quilt. And I've been doing that. Uh, I began with 16 inch blocks. Uh, these two I can't show yet because the quilt will be published. But these, my quilt was published on Quilters Border Magazine. Um, I made it with Batik's uh, Timeless Treasures Angel Fish. Uh, Tonga Batik line is fantastic. But these are the blocks. And why did I make the test block? I use EQ8 um, right now to uh, design my quilts. And uh, sometimes the measurements, uh, very few times they just don't work out the way they are printed from EQ. And so whether they work out or not, I don't care. I need to make the test block. Test block. And these, I actually I thought, oh, I'm going to make a tabletop. And so I made four of them. So, I mean, two of each block. I have, I had this block and I had this block uh, in the quilt. So I made two of each. So these are 16 inches. And I said, okay, that's how my, my idea started with these blocks. And then I kept just making more blocks using the same fabrics. This for another quilt. Oops, here we go. And this is a 12 inch block. And this for another quilt. And the fabrics that I use in the quilt are totally different, but these are the ones that I've been using for this. This is another block that I tested. And oh, this one is soon it's going to be available from Timeline, Timeless Strategy. You can't see it very well because of the colors, and I'm a little bit far from the camera. But this is a fantastic block. It took a lot of, uh, I actually had to come up with my own technique to make this block come out this way. You're not going to be able to see it correctly. Well, maybe you can. Look at that. Anyway, see, all using similar colorway and similar fabrics. This is another block. And see, my quilt is getting bigger and bigger. Another block using the same colorway. For the blocks, and this you can't see so well. Ah, this I just released this pattern. These are my test blocks for the pattern. It's called um, actually I don't know where I have the pattern here, but you go on my site again. This is Denise Russell. My website is pieceedbrain.com, and if you go on the patterns, you're gonna see this pattern. It's called Woven Together, and um, it has blocks like this, and it has the star blocks, which I love, like this. And the stars sometimes are like this, sometimes are like this, so it's pretty cool. And this is another block that I, I made a test pattern for, the test block for this pattern. It's a pretty cool one. Uh, these, you know, they're simple, but you have to make the test block in order for the pattern to be correct. It's another one I made the test block yesterday. And of course, the quilts, they're going to look nothing like these blocks because the fabrics are totally different. And so at some point, you can tell I already have a quilt ready here with all these blocks. I just have to figure out how to put them together. 
and I will um, maybe use it for two quilts. This this block here is a test block for a quilt that I made for Michael Miller. And if you are in Pasadena QuiltCon this week, it's gonna be hanging there. Terrific fabrics. Uh, but these this was my test block. And so that's what I've been doing. And I suggest that if you want to test uh, an idea or a few ideas, you know, we're gonna be doing that often, that you use the same um, fabric. Uh, colorway or same fabric collection so then in the end after a few months you have all the blocks that you need for a quilt and I think this is all that I have for you today thank you for joining me I hope that these ideas uh, were helpful to you and um, I'll try I'll see you next week I'm going to be doing a Facebook live for um, Amy's catalog showing one of my quilts so anyway it was very nice being with you, and I say goodbye. I will have this, quilt, uh, this video saved, and I'll put it on the blog, and I'll also save it to my YouTube channel so you can look at it and get the tips later on. And I'll, put, I'll mention the book and the ruler and the cake mix recipe again on the comments of, on my Facebook page. I'll see you soon.